Yeah. 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 All good. No worries. My name is Darren Filkey. I'm the superintendent in charge of Safe Holes Traffic Services Division. I just want to make a short statement. 2023 has seen the worst lives lost in serious injury numbers since 2010. Unfortunately, we have now exceeded the total number of lives lost for the whole of 2022, and we still have five months of this year to go. To date, 72 people have lost their lives compared to 43 at the same time in 2022. And 511 people have sustained serious injuries compared to 424 at the same time last, as last year. This is completely unacceptable, whichever way you look at it. From a policing perspective, these numbers are frustrating, disappointing, and disconcerting. SAPOL and the community must work together to achieve a reduction in road trauma. A commitment to road safety is a priority for all South Australian road users. The ripple effect of road trauma, whether it be a life lost or a serious injury, should not be lost on anyone. The emotional, physical and financial impact of all the families involved and the broader community should serve as a constant reminder to all road users to be ever vigilant. The 2023 road trauma statistics should serve as a serious reality check. It is time for all people who use South Australian roads, whether a driver, a rider or a pedestrian, to wake up and grow up. Responsible and safe driving and riding behaviour is not an option on South Australian roads. I'm happy to take your questions. So I see you've got an operation starting uh, this Friday afternoon. Do you want to tell us about that? Sure. Uh, SAPOL run a series of road traffic operations that operate throughout the year. We operate under a, a, an overarching operation called Operation Safe Roads, and underneath that are a number of operations that target the fatal five causes of road trauma in South Australia. This Friday is drink and drug driving. Drink and drug driving account for around about 26% of the road trauma on South Australian roads. So we will continue to unashamedly target drink and drug drivers. They cause no end of carnage and disappointment and just general sadness on our roads. So we'll, op we'll run Operation Drink Drive. It's not the, the first time we'll run it. It's not the last time we'll run it. We'll be anywhere, anytime. You want to take the risk of drinking drug driving, you'll wear the consequences of doing it. So you're talking about random stops, what are you, what's it going to involve? There'll be, a, there'll be a selection of random stops, um, static sites um, all across the state. It's a statewide operation. It's not just metropolitan based. Uh, un well, not, not even unfortunately. Drink and drug driving is not the confines of the metropolitan area. It happens in, in country regions as well. So we'll target all parts of South Australia under the operation that starts at 4 p.m. today. So what's your message, I guess, to drivers? What's the message from 4 p.m. today? Given it's an operation drink and drug drive um, specific operation, um, the simple message is, don't, if you're going to drink, don't drive. Do not take drugs and drive. Do not put uh, the safety of other road users in any jeopardy by stupid decisions that you might make to do that. So it's about responsibility is the underlying message. How long will it go for? Is it just today or will it go all weekend? It'll go all weekend. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a three day operation that will, that will run from 4 p.m. today until the early hours of Monday morning. Okay, I went to this fatal accident in Northfield yesterday. Do you have any sure. further information on that as to you know, possible cause, what may have happened? Um, that major crash investigation section is still working through the circumstances of that crash. Um, you would have seen um, by the scene itself, um, speed looks like it was a factor in that particular crash. Uh, but given that there's still ongoing investigations about that, that is as much as I can say at this point in time. This high death toll, um, what are the main reasons for it, the occurrences of the crash themselves? Sure, it's a, it's a really good question and it's somewhat difficult to answer because as you know, last year we had uh, a lives lost tally that we've exceeded in the first eight months of this year. It's difficult to pinpoint why. It's selfishness, it's immaturity, it's complacency, it's, uh, you know, this will never happen to me. It's, it's bad attitude, it's not people taking the right level of responsibility and ownership about how they drive a vehicle on our roads. It's a whole combination of things. It's 
it's never a problem for them until it is a problem for them. So to pinpoint exact reasons why is difficult, I think it's a combination of things. Would you like to see tougher penalties? I know some states have talked about double the merit points, all those sort of options. Are you looking at stuff like that? Uh, and we've got tough penalties for road use as it is. We've got double demerits on long weekends and in holiday periods. Um, it, we're constantly um, getting feedback about the level of fines, uh, the value of the fines that are attached to our uh, traffic um, offences. It's not about penalties. It's about people taking responsibility. Um, we can't fine ourselves um, out of this lives lost situation. We can't continue to, to jack up penalty. At some point, the penalties are where they should be. It's about people taking responsibility for their driving behaviour. Is, is the carnage located primarily in the metro region or is it statewide as it were? I know it's statewide. Um, and I think unfortunately for our regional and, and rural friends uh, this year, there's been 40 lives lost out of that 72 in the regional areas. Um, that is not uncommon to see an over-representation of lives lost in regional areas. So um, just like drink and drug driving not being the confines of metropolitan areas, um, lives lost and serious injury, injury isn't the confines of metropolitan um, South Australia either. It's a, it is a statewide um, situation. Can you take questions on other, other uh, topics? Um, I know the police, amount of police and the location where they're going to go. Uh, the two options, one the South Park lands and the airport have now been discounted. The government's preferred option is Jeff's Cross. How, how do you view that as in, from Sopal's point of view? Uh, it's, I'm, I'm here to talk about road safety, obviously, as the, the officer in charge of road safety. So, um, as you would know, the, there's ongoing discussions between government and say in relation to where mounted operations and dog operations for that matter will ultimately take up um, their home uh, when they leave Thibbet and Barrack. So it's not something um, I can comment about because I'm not involved directly with how those discussions are, are going. You can't say if that's a good option for you because it would mean transporting the horses to and from the city. That's a lot of travel for horses, which is not a great thing. And how do you feel about it? Um, I'm going to leave it in the hands of the people who are working on the project to, to find mountain and dog operations and other people, uh, other areas of St Paul that currently occupy Thevin Barracks, the best place um, to service the community of South Australia at the end of the day. So um, without being too flippant about it, it doesn't really matter what I think. Um, the people who, who are working through that now will, will come up with the right answer, I've no doubt about that. You don't have any more questions about traffic I have specifically? One more, that's yeah. okay. um, have you seen any market increase in drink and drug consumption in 2023? And that might be a read, even though it's difficult to pinpoint. Are you tracking a abnormal increase in drink and drug consumption, which might be leading to these uh, these fatalities? Uh, look, I think the simple answer is no. Um, the drink and drug driving is reasonably consistent. Um, clearly, we brought in uh, drug testing uh, a, a few years ago now. I don't have the, the date exactly in, in to mind, but so the drug driving is. Um, in, in some sense, we're recording figures that we hadn't recorded historically. Um, we do have a lot of people that are drug driving. I think there's in excess of 2,700 that we've detected this year. So that's drug driving? Drug driving. Uh, so that's not a good number. Um, and as I said, between drink and drug driving, that contributes to a bit over a quarter of all our lives lost. Can you tell us a little bit of information about the three men arrested in Norway <coughs> yesterday after said, the investigation into assault? That's not a traffic question. I think it's a crime service job, not a job I know about, I haven't been briefed on. Okay, thanks um, everyone. Right. One more. Um, would you, last week or recently, um, MP Nick McBride suggested that stressful driving may be contributing to the road toll and sort of patterns. Is that something that SAPOL is looking into and reducing that? How, how do you mean stressful situations? Well, no, not the situations, it's stressful driving activities, so perhaps, you know. Oh, I think it probably gets down to a bit of Concentration might be the answer to that to that question. Um, look, there's lots of different things that go on in people's lives um, that may contribute to the way they drive, the way they interact with other people on the street, to the way they interact with their families, a, a whole range of things. So um, we're not doing any specific research in, in relation to uh, people's individual personal situations, but clearly we're uh, cognizant of the fact that Lots of things run through people's lives all the time. 
my message to that is when you get behind the wheel of a car or you sit on a motorbike or you cross the road or you ride your bike, you need to be responsible. You take on a level of responsibility that you don't ordinarily have while you're at home sitting on your lounge. You're now in control of something that can clearly kill people, and we know that, um, and it's killing too many people. So I don't want to downplay the fact that people have other stresses in their lives, but when they drive a vehicle, ride a motorbike, they need to concentrate, they need to be responsible. Great, thanks everyone.